right, so we're working on our document where we're keeping track of the, and the measures we're generating for each of our variables. And we're focusing on the numeric ones for now. So let's add a few more that we want to investigate. First one would be our standard mean. So we've already determined what the median value is, and hopefully we'll find that the mean values are somewhat similar to the median values, Those will, that'll be a good sign. Also the standard deviation, skewness, and kurtosis. See if I can distribute these a little bit more evenly. All right, that didn't quite do the trick, so we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, column tweaking here. And in this case, I think what I may do is just uh, make the text slightly smaller, and that'll help a little bit. I'll leave it to you to make yours look beautiful, but for in the me but in the meantime, we can work with what we have here. All right, so mean, standard deviation, skew, and kurtosis. Now, if we go back to the descriptive statistics we created in Excel, we can see we actually have all those. Mean, okay, that's right up there at the top. And one thing to keep in mind, uh, we also selected a confidence level. So the uh, confidence level basically indicates that we have a 95% confidence level that the true mean of any population that this data came from would actually be uh, for age, and uh, as an example, 39.21 plus or minus 0.7535 there. So, so that's what the confidence level there indicates. So we've got our mean, we've got our standard deviation of 14 for age, we've got kurtosis of negative 1.2 there for age, and skewness of 0 0.05. So we can fill those values in right directly into our table, but it's good to actually visualize them to a certain degree as well. So let's see if we can do that in Power BI. So the first thing we might do is start with age. So I can say I want to create a column chart here that includes age. And you can see by default, it sums up the age. What we really want is the count of age. And that gives us our 1,338 rows that we have. Now, how many in each age? So I can actually drag age into the axis here as well. And now what I get is a count of age by each age. So I can see here for 18, I have 69. I've got 68 for 19. And then I drop off to 29, so on and so forth. So I can see here I've got a much bigger volume right there, the very lowest end of the age bracket, and then it's fairly evenly distributed throughout the rest. The next thing I might do is I can actually create buckets by age. So if I were to right click here and say, let's turn this into a group, and I could say, instead of, in, instead of investigating each age individually, let's just create uh, and since this is a numeric variable, it's going to automatically tell me when I'm trying to group here that you want to create bins. And I could create bins based on the number of ages I want in each bin, or I can actually tell it I want this specific number of bins, in which case it will create them uh, that number of evenly distributed age groups. So let's say I wanted uh, 15 distinct groups. When I do that, my bar chart updates to show me these various groups. And it, you can see now I have uh, age in bins on my x-axis label there. 
I also have a new measure here. I can change that age or I can use that age in bins measure for any other visual I want. So we'll call this distribution, age distribution. bins. So what we would want to do now is the same thing for our other three numeric variables. And I'll do that real quickly. Let's do uh, BMI next. So we'll create a column chart, BMI. Change that to count. bring BMI into my axis as well. And you can see that gives me a whole bunch of different values. So here I may say, let's uh, create 25 different bins. And it actually recommends 23 to me. So I'll go ahead and stick with 23. So you can see this approaches a normal distribution. It uh, may be skewed a little to the right, uh, but we now have a visual representation of what our data looks like. Okay, so I will do BMI distribution bins. I'll create my third one for a number of children. That one, again, we probably won't want to create the bins because we only have six values there. If we recall from our previous analysis. So I'll go ahead and create the column chart. Add number of children. Change that to count. bring children into my axis as well. And now I can see, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Finally, I'll create another one. This one, note we didn't use bins for children. Uh, we definitely will for charges. So I'll create a new visualization and add charges. Change the field value to count. Bring charges into my axis as well. And now once I've uh, completed that, you can see that most of my charges are between zero and 10,000. And then uh, I've got uh, smaller numbers as I move up and very, very small numbers as I get above 50,000. All right. So again, a right skewed distribution here. And that is reflected in the numbers that we have for our Excel analysis. So charges, yeah, the skewness is 1.51. Skewness of BMI is 0.2. Skewness of children, 0.93. So, so pretty highly skewed there. And then the uh, skewness of uh, age is actually pretty small. BMI is probably our most normal looking distribution at first glance. And we can see the kurtosis is Pretty small on that. It's um, you know, 0.05 below, less than what you would expect a normal distribution. So, and the skewness at 
is not terrible, but you can see it's got a little bit of a tail to the right. So that is our visualization. And what we can do now is grab these visualizations and bring them into our document. So I've got my age distribution. Now, because Power BI is designed for you to publish and display these, cut and paste isn't going to work like you would normally expect it to. So what you want to do is go ahead and go to your Power BI visual that you would like to cut and paste and bring into your Word document. Switch back over to Word. And now I'm going to go to the Insert menu. And in my ribbon, I've got a bunch of choices here. One of them is Screenshot. And as I click the down arrow there, all of my other windows pop open and I can bring in the entire screen itself, or I can actually grab part of the screen using this screen clipping option. And now once I do that, I can highlight the portion of this screen that I want to bring in. And as soon as I do that, I get my visual in the Word document. And I can resize that. And in this case, what I'd like to do, since this is my age field, is I'm going to go back over to my Excel document and highlight the descriptive statistics for age and bring them right here next to my distribution chart. And I'm going to do a paste special. And what I'll do instead of bringing it in as an HTML, I'll bring it in as a uh, an enhanced metafile picture. You can uh, play around with the different options and see what works best for you. And now once I resize that, I've got both of these side by side. And I might even, um, you know, have a little header here that says this is my age. And next we can go down here and do the same thing for our other fields, BMI, children, and charges. While we're here, we can look at age and see that the mean and the median are pretty close. So that's a good sign as well. Uh, we've done our distribution charts, bend where appropriate. So now we'll just work our way through the other ones. All right, so in relatively short order, I have a, a somewhat organized analysis of my variables. What we'll do next is move on to our next portion of the report. And of course, if this were a large project, you may create a whole separate report for each section of the CRISPDM documentation. In our case, we may just uh, go ahead and add a new section to our report. And we'll call this data exploration. And I'll make this a heading one, just like we did for the section header for the data understanding section. Now, at this point, I would also want to go in here under age and start typing up what I find about each of these distributions. So here's my age distribution. Uh, you know, what do I find? Is there anything interesting? Anything that I think I need to act on? Same thing here with uh, BMI. And then I'll do the same thing again for children and charges. So you'll want to do that as you do your uh, data analysis report. I'll just insert a quick page break here so I know that my heading is on the same page as my chart and write-up. And at that point, we can start the data exploration. Uh, I'll go ahead and insert another page break there. And our report is ready to move on. In that data exploration, section, we'll start putting together our scatter plots, checking for homoscedasticity, 
uh, evaluating it, uh, looking at uh, the data distribution across our variable pairs. And we'll get to that in the next video.